Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak with you at this Interfaith Summit on Climate Change, co-hosted by Religions for Peace and the World Council of Churches. Ryoanji is a Zen temple located in Kyoto, Japan. It is famous for its stone garden. At one corner of this garden, there exists a hand washing pot. On that pot is carved the phrase, I only know satisfaction. What a mysterious phrase. It points to an original satisfaction that is beyond ordinary pleasure and pain. It is an original satisfaction that is always present even in the midst of ordinary pleasure and pain. It makes clear that nothing makes us happy without a satisfied heart and mind, mere financial, material, social or natural blessing can never make us happy if our hearts and minds are not satisfied on this more original and deeper level. Quote, a person who truly knows satisfaction is calm in heart and mind, and a person who does not know satisfaction is confused in heart and mind, told Shakyamuni Buddha. Buddha's teaching invites us to open ourselves to a deep paradox. Namely, a poor person does not mean one who possesses nothing, but one who cannot be satisfied while possessing much. We should know that we already have enough because we exist. God and Buddha have already given us all that is needed by us. This phrase, I only know satisfaction, expresses the original richness we already have been given. We must humbly turn into this original fullness if we are to address our current challenge of climate change. Sen no Rikyu, the great master of Japanese tea ceremony, noted that the central path of tea consists in the spirit of, quote, being satisfied with a house not leaking water and with enough food to avoid hunger. Preparing and serving tea when needed with not too much or too little tea takes time. It takes a willingness to be in tune with reality. The humble cup of tea is first offered to Buddha, then served to guests, and finally one drinks. This cultivates the spirit of welcoming the other, the awareness of the link between serving and one's own happiness. We have been sustained all our lives by receiving from the universe. Now we are facing climate change due to greenhouse gases. This severe challenge cannot be met on the basis of human-centered fear. The challenge calls us to shift ground to return to our original human stance. We must respond on this basis of this profound religious experience of, quote, I only know satisfaction. This is a subtle point. Let me spell it out. Greed, fear, and insecurity 
do not provide the ground for solving the challenge of climate change. Rather, reclaiming our original blessing must be and must remain our starting point for addressing this challenge. Climate change is a severe, severe challenge, but is it not also a message from the Earth? A message that invites us to return to our original selves, the original selves that God and Buddha endlessly offer. Perhaps the threat of climate change is an invitation to return to an authentic way of life. By this, I am not speaking against all that is good in our modern experience. Rather, I am focusing on the reclaiming of our, in a religious sense, original existence. Our declaration lays out problems we must tackle. Instead of thinking about how to produce short-term solutions to them, we must have action programs with results measured in decades or even centuries. I believe that religious networks such as Religions for Peace and the World Council of Churches will hereafter play increasingly important roles in promoting such long-term solutions. Why do I believe this? Because the answer to the challenge is to return to our authentic and true modes of being. Technical issues, technical cures are necessary, but they will never suffice. Rather, we must return to our true selves, our original hearts and minds. Beyond the technical issues, our problem is a religious and moral problem. Solving it calls for religious awakening and transformation that can guide our responses. In Japan, Seichou no Ie stands out as one religious organization that has pioneered such programs as the Carbon Zero Movement uh, that aims to cancel out carbon dioxide emissions from the organization's activities. My organization, Visho Kosei Kai, has implemented an Earth-friendly approach Risho Kosekai has learned much from Seicho no Ie, and we are working closely with this group to promote these programs. Furthermore, many Japanese religious groups, including the member organizations of Religions for Peace Japan, continue to work in their own ways to address these issues. My grandfather, Nikkyo Niwano, the founder of Rishoko Sekai, said that everything we receive is a gift from nature. We can never give rise to right faith without asking ourselves what is the purpose of our lives being supported by a great many things. We humans need to live in the awareness that our lives are fully interconnected and that we are being sustained by the web of all existing things. I continue to hear the ring of the question posed by founder Niwano, what is the purpose of our lives being supported by a great many things. Thank you very much.